Hey guys. Wow. Hey Cam, look at you smiling. Hey George, good to see ya. How you doing? I think it's a little warm outside for a vest, man. <laughs> it's candlestick like winds here uh, outside the stadium. We've already had four people flee because it's too cold during the dark. That's why I'm that's wearing why I'm a cutting. that's why I'm wearing a tank top. Yes. Well, welcome. Glad, glad you're all warmed up. Uh, okay, so you know, obviously, our, our uh, main look today was to see how Jimmy was playing. We hadn't seen him practice in a long time, uh, and we saw him next to Trey. So, your impressions—I'm pretty sure you were working mostly with Jimmy on, on the other on the far field today. Yeah, I was. What was, what was your question, Cam? I, I guess just how he's how he's looking, and just uh, it, it seems just as normal as it has the past few years with him in practice. Oh yeah. Uh... Yeah, I mean, it seems pretty normal. Uh, you know, we have a crowded, you know, crowded quarterback room this year. We got five of those guys, and you know, they're all playing at a high level. It's fun to see those guys get reps. And you know, Jimmy's slinging the ball. He's got his nice touch, throwing a firm pass, and um, you know, it's just fun to see both the guys compete. And whether you know, I, yeah, I've taken all my snaps with Jimmy, and um, you know, whoever's out there, I'm just going to catch the ball from, and they just got to throw it to me sometimes. Hey, George. Um... You know, obviously this part of the, the off-season program is voluntary, but you and along with a lot of other notable veterans are participating in and participating in team drills specifically. Um, why, why is it important for you guys to, uh, to participate in the OTAs, and, and what do you think you guys are going to gain from this process over these next few weeks? Well, I'm pretty sure we have everybody but two guys here, and I think D Ford was here the entire offseason, so he's just taking some time at home and – you know, Nick's still recovering, doing his rehab stuff. So the fact that we have our entire team here, other than those two guys, I think is it's awesome. And what it says about this team is that you know we want to be here, we want to get better. You know, we want to be able to bond as a team and you know take those steps forward. And um, I know like there's no games on Sundays, but those four days of practice or three days of practice and a phase two day, like you use those and you stack those days up, and you're gonna get better. And whether that's like a young guy just learning the playbook and hey, on this route, you need to push your depth a little bit more. You need to stem straight at them. Like those coaching points that we didn't get to pick up last year because we only got a couple weeks of training camp. And so these weeks of OTAs are big for our entire team. And it's big for our coaches too because they can learn better ways to install plays for this fall camp. Um, you know, and they're just learning the best way to, you know, coach guys really. And so the whole team's really taking a step forward. You have to call on someone else? Come on, Tess. Hey, George. Hi. Are you driving? That's dangerous. No, I'm not. I'm oh. parked. <laughs> Safety first. Uh, although you haven't taken any reps with Trey, what's your general impression of him and how the quarterbacks are working together? Oh, uh, you know, I mean, he looks a little bit better than a rookie quarterback. Uh, you know, he's out there. He's slinging it. Uh, I was really excited yesterday. He made like he made an awesome throw on a play action. You know, he found the. Uh, he found my rookie Josh Peterson on a on a, like a far corner is what we call it on a rollout, which is like the last guy you'd throw it to on the play. And the fact that he found him in his first ever rollout was pretty cool. Um, you know, just seeing him out there and trying to figure it out. Um, yeah, I just like watching guys compete, like I said. And um, if you can pick up this offense as a rookie and be able to you know analyze it and throw it to the right guy, and at the same time you know overcome coaching to make a play, it's impressive. And so. I uh, just can't wait to see what these next couple OTAs days, you know, give Trey and allow him to, you know, continue to move forward. Hey, George, you've um, noted in the past that, that Jimmy isn't the world's greatest texter. Um, <laughs> and uh, I just wonder, I mean, he, he went, you know, his name was uh, bandied about quite a bit this offseason, wasn't always good. Uh, I'm wondering whether you reached out to him, whether um, – you know, you, you, you sort of caught, um, were affected by all the, you know, mostly negative stuff that was being written about him and whether you reached out and what, um, you know, what, what your reaction, what his reactions were. Oh, I mean, it was actually, this was a great off season, you know, for me and Jimmy, uh, you talked about once a week, you know, every other week it was, you know, just catch up, see how we're doing, uh, recovery wise, you know, what we're doing workout wise. You know, when we're going to meet up on Xbox, those types of things. Um, but, no, good. You know, Jimmy G's, he, he's himself. He's feeling good. Um, you know, I don't want to talk for him, but he looked great today. He's looked great every day that I've worked out with him so far. Like I said, he's slinging that baby, and he's still got a nice touch. And, uh, you know, he never get past that chin line. So, we're, you know, we're feeling good about it. Hey, uh, George. Uh, Fred is 
Warner is now in, you know, kind of the same position you, you were in last year. Mm -hmm. um, and it seemed like maybe the discussions are kind of where, where they were before they, they heated up. If, if you guys, I mean, I don't expect you to explain your <laughs> conversations with them if you had them, but I don't know, generally speaking, you know, have you given him advice as far as patience and don't be angry and, uh, you know, your time will come and all that? Oh, I mean, I don't like to pry myself in other people's business. I told him that if he has any questions, you know, uh, you know, I'm just across the locker room or, you know, just a text away. But, you know, he's being a professional about it. He's showing up. He's working his tail off. And, you know, he's the same Fred that he has been every single day that I've known him. He's the first guy to break down the huddle. He's, you know, first guy on the field. And you love to see that. And, you know, I know that, you know, it was definitely, a, you know, it was a distraction last year to an extent, you know, as much as, it, you know, you don't want it to be, but it is to an extent. But, uh, you know, Fred's handling it well. And he's just showing up to play football. So, you know, I'm happy for that. And, it is what it is, and the time will come when it all happens. Hey, George, uh, as, as I'm sure you went through, a lot of your rookie teammates when they first moved out here have shown some uh, shock at the, the sticker cost of, of living here and things like that. I know you guys as veterans get asked to go in and speak to those guys about what your experience was like and, and going through that transition to, to the cost of living and all that. What is your advice to those guys? What do you, what do you say to them when you, when you get those opportunities? Uh, get a roommate or two. You know, my rookie year, I lived with J.P. Flynn and Trent Taylor and my girlfriend at the time, who's now my wife. So we had we just split that up, you know, try to live close. Don't be somewhere where there's a lot of distractions around. Um, you know, the one thing that's really nice about playing football in, you know, Santa Clara is, um, you know, football is like the number one priority at all times. You know, you gotta get, you have to go out of your way to find something to do or to find a way to get into trouble. So uh, I think it's a great place to be able to go play football and just focus on it every single day. So, I mean, and for rookies, you know, you've tried your entire life to, you know, get to this level. Uh, just because you have a couple of dollars in your pocket, there's no really reason to, you know, change what you've been doing. Like, just put the pedal to the metal and keep going. Hey, George. Hey, Grant. What's your, how you doing? Yeah, fabulous, what's man. Your, what's your impression of the tight end room right now? What's your impression of Dwelly, Warner, Helm, Peterson? Give us the rundown. Hmm. Uh... No, I think it was awesome this entire offseason. I had Dan Helm and Charlie Warner with me in Nashville, so we got to train. So I got to see them the entire offseason. And, um, you know, besides the fact that Dan Helm looks like a G.I. Joe and Charlie Warner can bench press a house, they both come a long way since last year. Uh, I think they both look really good. Um, Dwelly uh, looks incredible. You know, he's the same guy he always has been, a little bit faster, I think. Still got those sticky hands, you know, still – you know, I know he's your favorite tight end, but he's also my favorite tight end. So it is what it is. And, uh, you know – my guy Josh, uh, he's a rookie. Uh, he's learning it out. But you know, the fact that we get to split up on two fields allows him to get a lot more reps, which is nice to see. You know, watch his tape. He's definitely a natural athlete. Um, I think we're a tight room that we have the ability to be a really good room that you know you can rely on. You know, from me to Dwelly and you know Charlie's definitely taking a lot of steps forward, and it's going to be a fun competition this entire OTAs and all the training camp just to see what guys can do day in and day out. Hey, George. Has it been a, Hi, a sense of relief? Hey, how's it going? I'm excellent. Well, good. Uh, has it been a sense of relief to finally get out there to a bit of normalcy in a way that you <laughs> obviously did not have last off season and, and much of the last year? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, no, just being able to see the guys. Um, you know, everyone in the same locker room. You know, we got the like the the window wall things up, but just have a little normalcy. It is nice, you know. Um, you know, you're still sitting six feet away from each other, but just being able to be in the same room and actually have conversations with guys, it definitely, you know, it brings a little bit of the fun back in football, you know, without the games on Sunday. So just enjoying spending time with my teammates and the fact that we have everyone here but two guys, like I said, it's, it's very impressive. And the fact that everyone wants to be here and, you know, get better together, uh, you know, th those days of just, you know, hanging out and talking, whether, you know, guys are playing cards, chess, whatever they're doing, but, you know, guys are bonded. And I think that's a huge uh, It'd be, it's really big for the team to be able to, you know, spend time together and take that step forward just, you know, to be friends. Hi, George. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Not much. Uh, speaking of, uh, of those off-season workouts with, with Charlie Werner and Daniel Helm, uh, did you incorporate anything new? Was there a new focus for you this off-season? And, and I guess following up on our little back and forth the other day, ha have you bulked up? A little bit through that off-season work. Yeah, hey, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, you know, I did some new things this off-season. Um, well, I got to, like, create my own facility on my property in Nashville and got to put all the toys that I wanted to in there that I think best help, you know, 
me and the guys around me to you know take a step forward and you know not stay the same or you know go backwards and um, you know a big thing for me this offseason was just like foot health ankle health and so you know that's the thing that's you know just kind of lingered on me and so you know I got a lot of these balance beams from this company called Foot Collective which you know it's been really fun just walking up and down these beams and uh, kind of make my own obstacle park you know obstacle course I would say and you know doing whatever I can just to uh, you know be as healthy as I can be and as strong in those areas that have been my weakness and just focus on that, you know, just because you can't do the same thing and expect different results. So just trying to add as many new different things that I feel like are, you know, making positive influences in my life and on my body. Hi, George, Hello. this is Kylan with Cron4 News. How are you? I'm excellent. How are you? Good. Doing great. Thank you. Um, you mentioned Nick Bosa not being able to be here. Uh, have you talked to him at all just about how his recovery is going, how he's feeling, and just kind of his outlook at what his outlook is like ahead of the season? Yeah, uh, you know, Nick's actually a guy we, we basically talk almost every day. Uh, you know, Nick's my guy. He actually lives above me in my apartment building. So when he is here, we hang out all the time, um, humble brag. But, no, Nick's doing great. Uh, he's out there running. I know you guys see, like, the Instagram videos. He's reha rehabbing well. But, you know, he's happy. He's very happy where he is, um, you know, in his recovery. Like I said, like, I see the videos. He looks great. Um, he already – he's been watching the film the, just the last couple of days of OTAs, and he says he's ready to come back out here and, you know, come after me in the tight ends. And I said cut blocks are live, so get ready for it. So, uh, you know, just excited to see Nick Bosa back on the football field. Two more, please. Two more. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Laying the hammer down. Yeah, yeah. Hey, George. Uh, I want to go back to the draft. Uh, I was oh. wondering uh, what your reaction was to getting two running backs. I know you, you know, live to block. Uh, and then also Jed York's tweets. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I like drafting two running backs. Uh, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Trey. Uh, Trey. Um, you know, just watching him in the, you know, in the playoffs or Big Ten championship game. I think he was in that one, but just to see him, uh, he's such an aggressive runner. He's a big body. He just likes to run through people, but he still has a finesse to his game, which is awesome to see. He, I mean, he's a fast guy that runs downhill, and you know, I love that in this offense. Uh, Elijah's been great. You know, just seeing the the routes and the reps that he's gotten run the running the rock, uh, he looks really good too. So you know, I'm excited about our running back room because it is that's a crowded room too, and uh, you know, when it's crowded, that uh, you know breeds competition, which is what it's all about, and. Uh, you know, Mr. York, his tweets were, uh, I like that. You know, I try to guide him a little bit, you know, try not to search your name too much on Twitter. That could, you know, that's a dark hole that you don't want to go down. But, you know, just have some fun with it. And, I, you know, I like to see him out there and enjoying himself. It's, uh, he should. Hey, George, what does losing a receiver like Kendrick Bourne mean for your locker room? And mm. uh, how would you guys simulate that energy in production? And then my follow-up to that would be, is there anybody specifically that, you, you know, you're looking to see take a step forward? Uh, I mean, I, I'm so happy for KB. You know, he has earned every single cent that the Patriots paid him. I'm very happy for him. I'm sad to see him go. You know, he is a, he's a glue guy. Uh, he keeps uh, the upbeat, positive energy. Um, every single day, you know, he's consistent every single day. So that's something that you're gonna, definitely going to miss. But I mean, that just kind of puts the pressure on the young guys and the guys that are left in the room to, you know, step up and also take on that role. And you know, I'm not asking anyone to be KB, but we got to have guys that step up and bring that positive energy and that positive vibe every single day. Because, you know, day in and day out of football, it, it gets harder, you know, as the time goes on. And it's really easy to bring that energy one day, you know, two days, but when you get in day four, five, six, seven, eight of camp and you're in the season, that's hard. So, um, well, we'll have guys step up, and I'm not worried about that. It's we're a good we're a good wide receiver room, and I think we got guys that can step up for that energy. And as for the guys that I want to see step up, I mean, I think our entire room needs to step up. Honestly, I mean, you know, everyone on the team needs to step up if we want to improve from where we were last year. Um, but I mean, I know Debo wants to have a better year. I know Brandon wants to have a better year. I'm looking forward to seeing Richie and Jawan Jennings. Um, really looking forward to you know seeing Jalen Hurd back on that football field because I think he's very dangerous. Excited to see him get a ball in his hand again. But um, I'm just excited to see these boys work. And I can already tell, like, just off of last week compared to this week, I feel like our wide receivers are already taking a big step forward. And, you know, they're out there catching the ball, running a lot, running around a lot. So uh, I'm just excited about this room. And I think there's a lot of potential there for them to be great. Thank you, George. Also, hey, let's go Preds, baby. <laughs> Phil Forsberg, baby. Coming for you, Carolina. Woo! Hey, Faith. Click here to subscribe.